to Jew in the City Speak with your host, Allison Josephs, also known as Jew in the City. I get to meet a lot of cool people on this show, um, and the best ones I bring back again. Um, and today, uh, we're speaking to someone who's been on the show a couple times before. Uh, you've probably heard of him by now. His name is Nisan Black. Um, he is a black Hasidic rapper. Um, he's a convert as well. He's been on the show before to talk about his journey to Judaism. We had him back a second time to talk about, you know, sort of uh, the challenges uh, between the black and uh, non-black Jewish community, uh, black non-Jewish and, uh, you know, white passing Jewish community and what that's like to kind of be in the space in between. Um, and we're so excited that he's back here today to discuss a show that's been recently announced um, coming out on HBO Plus. Is that the network, Nisan? HBO Max, HBO, HBO Max. Max. HBO Max. I knew it was a plus or a max. I knew it was HBO plus something else. Um, the title <laughs> right now is Motherland Bounce. Diet HBO. <laughs> um, and we're just so excited. Um, first of all, Nisim, everything that you do as a Kiddush Hashem, I posted that on your Instagram uh, you know, post when you announced the show. Um, and so as an organization that thinks a lot about um, how Orthodox Jews are depicted, how we're viewed in the world, how the world experiences us, um, we're so thrilled that, there's going, that your story is going to be amplified and told to more people. Um, so we'd love to, you know, get as much info as you're allowed to say right now. I imagine, uh, you can't say everything because, uh, probably not everything is, public, <laughs> but, um, whatever you're allowed to divulge, um, our listeners would love to know. So, um, I, how can you, I guess, let us know like when, how, um, this show kind of started to come to be? Well, um, over the years, I've been approached uh, a lot by a lot of different networks um, about my show, um, about my story for a show. Um, and this one specifically, I think we've been working on for maybe six, seven months or something like that in terms of um, getting a deal, you know, different pitches within inside the HBO network. Ali Richardson, I mean, Sally Richardson, sorry, who um, reached out to us um, it has a all in deal with HBO. Um, I grew up watching Sally um, back when I watched movies. I haven't seen a movie in like 10 years, but back when I did watch movies, uh, she played in a lot of movies that, you know, I watched growing up. So I was very, very familiar with her. Um, and they reached out about uh, doing something with my story. And we didn't know exactly where we were going to go yet. And we started conversations and things sort of just developed. Um, they had an idea of doing a comedy because of, of the comedy. They were inspired by um, the beginning of my best friend video, um, which the dialogue there with me playing a chef and, you know, having a funny scene there with uh, L'chaim Moji, the friend Zakaria, and also Motherland Bounce, the, the song itself, um, uh, which they found to be like more comedic and gave them that feel of, you know, coming to America, which the video was, you know, basically based off of. So they wanted to be able to do something that would be different um, obviously there's one way to tell it where it could be very dramatic. And I was approached by other producers at Netflix, um, about my, um, which is a separate company that worked for Netflix. Um, Queen Latifah reached out to me about doing a documentary. Um, so there's been a lot of over the last few years of people reaching out to do documentaries or a movie, a feature film, and then the comedy one. And I sort of felt like comedy was a way to, sort of touch on areas and what, what impressed me more about this pitch at HBO was um, was that comedy is a way to tell things and, and do it sort of through a side door without things being too serious. Okay. Um, the more serious it gets, I actually would have been more nervous, even though I'm, I'm, I'm probably perceived as a more serious guy. I definitely have a, have a funny bone I like to share, but I, I think that it's a little bit easier to talk about things that um, that may be hard to talk about if it's done in a kind way as opposed to doing it, you know, straight up in a drama series. So um, we started talking. We ended up uh, looking for writers. And obviously, as we're looking for writers in Hollywood um, who, you know, obviously you want somebody that's experienced, somebody that can, you know, do a very good job with the story. And obviously they have to have some relationship uh, with the Jewish community and, and the black community. So we reached out, and I think one of the first writers that we reached out to 
because this uh, other silly, silly, very silly, not silly in a funny way, but silly um, um, idea and silly series of this unorthodox on one other network, it was very hard for some of the writers to write anything positive about the community. And I was like disgusted with some of the stuff that I heard out of one writer. So we moved on. We went through, we interviewed different people uh, until we came to Moshe Kasha. Moshe Kasha, um, you know, grew up, his father was Hasidic. Um, his mother, you know, maybe she was at one point religious or maybe his father was a bold truth. I can't remember, but I just remember that in the summers he would be by his father was religious and he had to pretend like he was <laughs> like he was religious and then during the rest of the years by his mother who was not religious you know like so he had this very and he grew up listening to black hip-hop music so like he was like the perfect guy to sort of like you know write it and he's obviously well accomplished and has you know many shows under his belt as well um so we put together a team and we just started uh cracking at it and then you know it got brought into the hbo warner family so Beautiful. it's a long story, short story. Had you been troubled by the depictions of Orthodox and Hasidic Jews before you decided to do this? Is that something that had been in your mind? Absolutely. So that's always been my major concern. Like, and I've always, I say to them, like, every time we have a meeting, guys, you know, <laughs> again, again, we have to be very, very, I mean, good thing about Moshe, Moshe, for him, the, you know, his jokes are from, from, from home, you know what I mean? There's certain things that you can only laugh about when you come from a certain community or where you've been exposed, you know what I mean? You know certain things. So that's a good thing about him. And he he, he has a major love for Yiddish guy, even though he didn't grow up technically religious. So that was fine. Um, other people have a very, very, um, that I've encountered with in terms of, you know, everybody on our team has been very, very respected um, of a lot of things. There are a lot of things that I disagreed with, you know, socially, um, and our pictures that they took out. Um, so I was very, very, you know, so far I have nothing, I don't feel like I have anything to be worried about, but I was very aware of the things that were going on in terms of it. I haven't seen any series of what's what's being depicted on other networks and different things like that, but I'm hearing a lot about it, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty disgusting. So, so I want to be able to do something that's going to bring light, you know what I mean? And make people laugh at the same time. So I think that I think that joy is the way in. For sure. Um, First of all, because Hasidic Jews are always depicted as super serious and, you know, really never seeing any joy. And because joy is such an important part of a healthy Hasidic life, Um, obviously. I mean, what I I really lament is that um, I think the most painful stories uh, that exist in the Orthodox and Hasidic world are the ones that normally come to uh, you know, be told in memoirs and TV shows and movies. And that's not to say that that's not a fair right. thing to discuss some of the time, but the question is, where are the happy people? And I think, you know, so many of us have been asking where are the stories of people coming to uh, to religion, coming to Judaism, as opposed to only running away. So um, this really seems like right. a wonderful answer. How much control will you have of um, how things end up? Do you, is that something that you've negotiated or in discussion about? Absolutely. So it's it's very, very tricky. Um, I have I have a lot. There's a lot that I have and a lot that can be. Well, it's sort of like the show can't really go on without me type thing. You know what I mean? So it's a lifetime deal. So I, I have to prove it. And since I'm very heavily, you know, working with Moshe uh, on the script, which, um, you know, they, they can they can make a decision that overrides us um, after we've turned it in. But they can't like make a decision on something that was not there. You understand what I'm saying? That we didn't turn in. So like if, if, you know, one joke I think is better than the joke that he said, or he think it's because it's a taste factor, then obviously HBO can decide that. So they give me a lot of control. We definitely made sure that the contract um, includes, you know, the, you know, issues of profanity, nudity, all those different types of things. Um, so it was very hard. The good part about it was, um, I found the wonderful lawyer who I don't know why not enough people know about in the in, in the Jewish world. Um, he stays on the outside. He's the only firm lawyer that I know of in the entertainment business. His name is Fred Tachik. Um, Fred got- is a mensch. Yeah, I just got huh? I just got introduced to Fred. Okay. So we're supposed to be having a call. Amazing. Okay, so he's working. Okay, amazing. So Fred is 
Fred is, you know, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter. I mean, that's really big. He's at least one of the top five boys in the music in the, in, the, in the entertainment industry. Um, and that was key for me as I started moving closer and closer with closing something with him. And, and as it got real, because I needed somebody who not only understood halakhically what can be done, but hashkafak what can be done. So it was only there was no way for me to be able to do this. I don't think without Fred. Like if I didn't have Fred, I probably wouldn't be able to do this um because it's too much to explain it's too much to to go over about things that are you know not just black and white but there's some other things that also too that this this won't fly yeah. you know so uh we definitely did that so there's a lot of um words and what I've been very impressed about was is that you know they just did it they were cool there was no pushback on anything it was so respectful HBO throughout this whole entire um, process. I, they even went above and beyond and, and gave even more than even what we asked in some, in some regards. So uh, hopefully things continue to go that way, but that's, uh, that's definitely been our negotiation so far. So just in terms of the format, um, is this a reality show, a documentary? Like what, like what are, should we expect to see in terms of what the final product will be? No, this, is a, this, <laughs> this is a scripted drama comedy TV series. Oh. Um, you know, so this is not, this is definitely going to be a TV show, not a, uh, it's not a, not a, not a, like a, it's not a scripted documentary or, um, a reality oh. show, definitely a TV show. Based on your life. Based on my life story. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's, you know, sort of like a fish out of water. Um, there's other shows that they reference. I can't really reference those shows cause I haven't seen them. Um, but in terms of very fish out of water yeah. type of thing, is there something else that you could reference for us that someone watching may have seen? I I think I I, I, I say all this in a kosher way, if the, if it can be kosher. But there's a Rami in Atlanta uh, story that's on TV right now, and there's some uh, other story I can't remember who it is. I'm sorry because I don't watch TV, so I don't know which one it is. But uh, Okay, like a Rami type of show. Yeah, the, I haven't seen that well, either, but I'm like familiar with that. Right, right. Um, and and so the uh -huh. and it will, is there going to be like a childhood Nisim? Is that part of like will they show your childhood growing up as a no? Mother? As of now, no. That's that's not it. I mean, the funny part of it is is not really that. That's where the drama comes in, really, is when it comes to the childhood and everything that I experienced growing up. That would be a lot tougher. Um, as of now. That's not it. It's mo mainly going to focus on my life in Israel, being black and the cultural shock of being in a Hasidic neighborhood coming from the hood, basically. Um, that's really what it is. It's all of those things. I think it will be a great lens for people to see um, in a very funny way how the outside world looks at, at, at Judaism without it being something negative, but from a complete way of not really understanding the way things work or why they actually run that way. I think that that's where the bulk of the comedy comes into. And who's going to play the part of your, um, the Hasidic Jews in the show? Where is this going to be filmed? Um, as of right now, we're talking about Israel. So that's, uh, that's, that's pretty much what we've all decided is that it's going to be in Israel. Like things are subject to change, but as of right now it should be in Israel. And the idea would be kind of the shtisel type of actors, like non-orthodox actors that know how to do orthodox well. Or we, we, you know, we're not, we're not sure. I have my eyes on guys inside the community, honestly, that I, that I think will be able to pull this off really well. And you know, um, I'm not going to say who those names are, but uh, we have quite a few characters, you know, already within the community. Um, that I think will be very, very good. And maybe them surrounded by <clears throat> a bunch of actors in the like shtisel type of way. But I definitely would like to make, <clears throat> you know, the core of the people, people that, you know, that are familiar, you know, with the community and familiar with the Yiddishkeit, it'd be a lot easier of a flow, in my, in my opinion. You know, obviously, um, we shouldn't expect um, any Orthodox character to be depicted perfectly. That wouldn't be fair. That wouldn't be real. Um, I think it's only because we've seen so much negativity that it's like, you know, looking for a break, looking for the positivity. Uh, the first time we spoke, you said you had not experienced racism, which I was so thrilled to see. Then on the second time I mm -hmm. interviewed you, mm -hmm. sadly, that had changed. 
how like how are we gonna <laughs> right. but I, i'll say like this in the world that i live in which is like centrist orthodoxy i think there's probably a lot more acceptance of jews looking you know in different ways and different skin mm -hmm. colors. that's not to say that people might not make an ignorant or sort of careless remark without realizing how it sounds or how it might isolate someone right. but my sense is that within my shul community we do have different colors in the neighborhood and community you've chosen to you know move to and live in in israel you've probably faced a lot more racism or people treating you like a fish out of water so how do you handle you know being honest and authentic and also not um giving people you know even more reasons to punch jews do you know what i'm saying you see like the tension i'm um you know, right explain. absolutely no i've thought about this but which is true like you want to be really want to be honest but it has to be really depicted in a way as as the way that it actually happens right like i've had those experiences but that's you know point zero two six of my experiences you know what i'm saying since so it has to show up that way it can't show up like oh this is the number one issue going on with with us over here you know what i mean and and for you know every every bad apple you have 10 good apples so, you know, one of the things I've suggested that, like, you know, when we show those type of things, and I think we're going to deal with those things, but in such a Seinfeld type of way mm -hmm. that it shouldn't uh, reflect bad, you know, that I, like, I so want to give some of the excerpts, but I just can't do any of that. But I, I, <laughs> I think these things are going to be touched on in such a funny way that it definitely would not leave that type of impression on people like, oh, this is how... Jews treat black people, you know, absolutely not. Because that would at that point that would be a lie. So that would not yeah. be true. So no, you understand what I'm saying? So no, I, I think I think it's brilliant because I think we have to be honest about the challenges and we have to continue to increase our sensitivity as a community and grow. And at the same time, um, there's there's definitely um, a danger. There's increasing, you know, Jew hatred and brazenness about Jew hatred. And so um, I think, you know, being but I, I'm I'm happy to hear that even though you've faced, you know, racist moments in your life there, it is continues to be such a small percentage and that should only continue. And I hope, you know, other people have a similar type of pattern. Um, what's the schedule in terms of filming and, you know, kind of production? Is that kind of uh, hammered out yet? Well, I actually just got for call within this sort of, I had to push back on me because we were talking about that. I mean, this could take several months. There's no definite right now. We're still turning in the official pilot, um, different things like that. They announced the deal because, you know, it's a four or five part deal. Everybody has a separate deal with HBO for this one show. Um, and I think we're waiting on me and maybe Moshe last. So we finished our deal. And so they wanted to make a big announcement, HBO about it. So that's what we did. Um, so in terms of the actual work, I mean, it was still several I would say several months out um, before uh, we even go into casting and, and all those other things. So it's definitely going to take a while, but um, still very exciting. So right now we're just going through the uh, going through the pilot right now. And just, I mean, I think I know the answer, but you're playing yourself. Uh, uh, that's also undecided. <laughs> got it. Got it. Okay. So I'm I I'm undecided. There's a lot of there's a lot of different. Uh, factors and ramifications to it so i haven't really decided uh if i'm going to or not i would love to um but there's there's other parts of it where i, I sort of i sort of don't want to so i had to figure it out got it. all right so i came in thinking this was a reality tv show that's very sort of clear that like you're in it your family's in it that's kind of like a basic thing now now that i understand that it's a scripted <laughs> show and is there is it on the table mm -hmm. for any of your relatives to play themselves or that's also not sure no, it is on the table. It is on the table. Um, you know, my wife is not so passionate about acting and uh, being in front of cameras. She actually likes to not be on camera. So it's very, so it's very, very complicated. But I think you know, maybe she, you know, it depends. Like right now, everything's so early right now that it's very, very hard to, to say which, which way it's going to go. But um, I would love to, you know, to explore that option of us both of both, us both doing it but right now we're undecided what about sort of the israel factor in this because i mean i think the brilliant thing about you know you being involved you're sort of at the crossroads at a lot of really touchy issues around jews between you know very black uh you know uh interactions um israel as you know 
framed as an apartheid state. So that's pretty bold that um, HBO, I mean, again, we already have shows like Fauda on Netflix, which um, I would say show the, you know, the conflict um, in a, a nuanced way and don't make either side into villains or, you know, um, simplified it all. <laughs> but that's great that um, HBO Max is is doing this. So um, what are, if we kind of actually with Yomaha Utsmahuta this week now, what are your thoughts about um, mm-hmm. how this show could um, impact people's opinion about Israel? Well, I hope so. You know, one of the biggest things about HBO, you know, when we did the final pitch with HBO, um, was the thing that the producer, head producer said was like, you know, it's true. He said, one of the things he said, I quote, is that you can't, you know, everybody says it, but this is true in this case that, you know, there's nothing like this on TV, right? He said, but the biggest thing is that we don't usually have a show that can actually change people's lives like this show can, you know? And I think that my feeling is and the excitement and their willingness, um, you know, even the negotiations that I have with HBO is that they they really want to take that lead on my on my spiritual journey. Um, and it'd be funny along the way, but they they want to really take that journey with me um, and show it in a beautiful way. Obviously, with Palestinian representation, all of obviously with these type of things, but all of these things we want to touch on in such a funny way that nobody's left feeling like, oh, I hate them or because of the, you know what I mean? Nothing that's going to turn into a bar fight, mm-hmm. but stuff that everybody can laugh at. The, 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 you know, the, the Yidden will laugh at, the Palestinians will laugh at if they've seen it, you know, uh, Black community will laugh at that we're saying. We're going for a very uh, universal funny is what we're going for on this. So it's very hard to do, but I don't, I don't think so. I think, I think, you know, we, we, we take somewhat away from the human spirit of that. There's so many commonalities, you know what I'm saying? Between us and, and the rest of the world that, that there are, there are a lot of things I think we could all laugh at together. A hundred percent. No, I think um, joy and positivity and laughter is definitely the way to go. Is that, a chance to be able to show sincere spiritual moments though through a comedy like have you thought about how because of everything is being laughed at is there a a chance to see the beauty of Shabbos is there a chance to see you know just some of the different parts of you know of of the Jewish holiday do you think that that can be given over through a comedic lens I could take someone like Ashley Blaker you know who is sort of uh, famous for um, poking fun at the firm world um, you know, I think he's lovable. Mm-hmm. The question is, does he give over like a spiritual um, sort of experience or is that not the goal? Or is that just, is it not possible to achieve anything? And if you achieve humanity and a, sort of a, a connection with the viewers, then they don't yeah. need to be inspired by your Shabbos dinner. No, no, no. I- Absolutely, they want to. The, the spirituality part is a huge component of what they want, so that's why it's called a drama comedy. It was uh, the picture is just a comedy in the in the paper, but it's a drama comedy. Got it. Um, and so they want most definitely the spiritual part is there because Sally Richardson, one of her biggest things is, you know, also being African American, she was just like her biggest push is that like she wants, you know, our people, as she says to see this like she really wants them to see that there's something different like she said it's so important for the black community to see that there's people Jews of color and different things like that so coming from her from her perspective all she's talking about every 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 meeting and she's you know she's the main director of capturing the spirituality of this capturing the spirituality so I think it's going to be you know somewhat of a hybrid of its kind, you know, in terms of how it's tackling all these different uh, social issues through a side lens in a very, very comedic way. And then also being able to talk about my spiritual journey in a way where we're saying that this guy found Judaism, but not proselytizing and saying that this is something that everybody else has to do, and so to speak. If the show succeeds, um, you know, according to your wildest dreams, um, what type of an impact uh, will there be in the world? Dream big now, Nisim. Like, what what would you hope? Um- dream big, dream big, dream big. I mean, you know, my my thing is, you know, my handle is God's man. You know, I, I really want much more people to be aware that there's a Hashem in the world <laughs> and to develop love. You know, I feel like so many people, you know, um, 
have been so divided over these last few years behind political and social issues and so many different things that it's like, and I remember growing up now, I haven't watched TV, I'm being honest with you, in over 10 years. So even all these shows they're referencing, I don't even know what's going on. You know what I mean? I only got internet because 2020 happened and my kids had to go on Zoom and I had to work from home. Before that, I didn't have internet for like 11 years. So I you understand what I mean, that I've been very, very disconnected for these things. So I remember when shows were normal and healthy, you know, things that you can show on TV that people grew up and everybody laughed at. And the, and the one thing that, you know, I mentioned to them, even when I introduced them to Ushbizi, um, honestly, uh, but what, one of the things I had told them is that like, if these things weren't funny, people wouldn't still be buying series of the Cosbys and El Good Times and all these other shows that before everything got so trashy, so crazy, people still buy this stuff and laugh at it. The next generation still laughs at all these things. So, uh, you know, let's make something that's golden. And I think we're pretty much all on the same page as that. You know, Moshe's having a very tough time writing the script without cursing in it, but he's getting it done. You know, um, the things that he's done has like been very, very hilarious so far, which you don't need. You know, a lot of a lot of these things are, you know, things that we think we have to have in order for something to be funny or to be able to achieve success. And, you know, I've seen that otherwise, you know, I've, I've been able to achieve success myself without making trashy music, you know, so... Amazing. Well, we launched this uh, Hollywood Bureau recently for the Jewish community. Um, we had our first uh, media awards. All these different minority bureaus have media awards. So, um, I mean, haven't seen the show yet, but Nisim, God willing, um, this sounds like this could be a contender for our second, <laughs> second media awards. So, um, yeah, we wish you um, all the success oh, and all the blessing um, and keep being that incredible light. Our community the Jewish community um, is so blessed uh, that you chose us. Um, we're so grateful that uh, you're a part of our family now um, and keep, uh, keep making us proud. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I don't take it lightly. I don't take it lightly. Thank you. And uh, we look forward to more updates. So, uh, so stay in touch. I will do. Will do. And thanks so much for watching. You can catch us same time, same place next week. Bye-bye.